welcome to Fun with Procurement. I'm your host, Emma Edwards, part of the marketing team here at 2 by 2 And Fun with Procurement is a place to listen for anyone who has an interest in procurement to get invaluable insight from the issues facing you today. Our speakers today are, uh, once again, Rob Kissick, founder and CEO of 2 by 2 And we've got a new guest uh, speaker joining us today, Ben McGuire. He's a category specialist at 2 by 2 uh, Welcome both. This episode is today, a topic is save the world with social value. At the end of the episode, you'll know all about social value and how you can include it in your contracts. But first, um, a question I'm dying to know the answer to, and we'll start with Ben. If a movie was made of your life, who would play you? Um, so the movie I've picked in terms of genre, a bit cliche for me, but I'm going for a sports inspiration type um, movie. So I play ice hockey and my team's only eight months old and we have lost every match we've ever played. But every time we play, we lose just a little less. So I thought it could be a sports film where we're the plucky underdogs, where perhaps we <laughs> learn the meaning of team spirit along the way and eventually win a match. Um, so I thought, well, what actor could play me there? They have to be able to skate. And I understand Keanu Reeves used to be a good hockey player when he was younger. He might be about 20 years older than me. But if you look at a picture of him 20 years ago and today, minus the beard, he hasn't actually aged that much. And Hollywood always liked to cast someone a bit older. So that's who I'm going with. Well, I think you've thought about that question quite a lot, Ben. I like it. <laughs> Rob? Uh, well, I've been uh, told a few times during my life that I look like a, a particular actor um, and I, I would have loved it to have been, you know, Brad Pitt or somebody like that. But uh, unfortunately, it was a guy called Jean Reno, um, who's a French actor. Um, so given that uh, I think when I was about 25, somebody said to me I looked like him and he's about 20 years older than me. So um, I, I didn't necessarily <laughs> take it as a compliment at the time. But I think I would probably have to have to have him uh, as as the actor. He's he's played. Uh, he's been in the Pink Panther. He's been in a number of different movies, um, but he's also been the voice of Masafa um, in The Lion King. Um, so if anybody, uh, any of our viewers have watched the French dubbed version of The Lion King, uh, they may well be familiar with Jean Reno. Oh, I'll have to look him up. I'm not familiar with him. <laughs> So let's go on to the um, important topic we're talking about today. Um, so what actually is social value? Um, ben, should we start with you again? So social value, everyone probably has their own uh, opinion of what it means. Um, I think when we refer to it, certainly in procurement, it's probably um, the, the government, they, they've given a lot of laws and policies around what social value is. So that's sort of the definition we tend to follow. And I think the private sector are also aligned with that these days. So social value, it's essentially generating benefits, not just for your organization, um, but for society, the economy uh, and the environment. So for every pound you spend, can it also potentially benefit someone else rather than just yourselves? Um, sometimes you may have heard it called sustainable procurement. And I think certainly in the private sector, um, it's what 10 years ago we were probably calling CSR, corporate social responsibility. So it's really, um, you know, in all of your contracts, how can there be a wider benefit rather than just the people who are party to the contracts? Um, what I would say is certainly in the public sector, the government, they've given three sort of areas that if an outcome as part of your contract is in one or more of these areas, it probably looks like social value. So they're saying if it's something environmental, something social or something economical, and that's the outcome through your contract, then that's probably social value. Okay, great, thank you. Rob, have you got anything to add to that? Uh, yeah, no, I think that's, that's a really good definition by an explanation by Ben. Um, I think, for for my side, as I was kind of pondering this question, I think procurement is an interesting area because we've, over the last, certainly over the last kind of 15, 20 years of being in procurement, I think we've really tried to um, expand that thought away from traditional purchasing through to procurement, supply chains, supply systems, and thinking more broadly. Um, and one of the concepts we've talked about a lot in, in procurement is the total cost of ownership. And I think social value is, and this kind of 
this this idea and, and kind of theory of social value is moving away from what the total cost of ownership is to what the total impact of ownership is. So actually um, moving away from TCOO to TIOO. I'm not sure whether I've heard that somewhere before or I've made that up. Um, but I, if, I've, if I have snapped it from somebody else, then uh, I apologize to them and I'll, I'll give them a shout out on the next podcast we do. Um, but that for me is kind of encapsulates what social value is. It's looking at what what are you trying to buy? What is the thing that you're trying to create or buy um, through procurement? And then looking at what is the impact of that? And, and those three aspects that, that Ben talked about are exactly those three lenses that we can look at social value through. Um, but for me, it's around, you know, how do we increase equality? Uh, how do we improve well-being? How do we increase the environmental sustainability of what we do? Um, and looking at those three areas. And I think the, the other kind of aspect for me is, it's quite difficult sometimes uh, as a procurement person to be able to understand what the impact is on everybody else that's involved in the in that purchase. Um, so it's also about engaging other stakeholders and looking at how we can ensure other stakeholders are brought into the process so we can understand what the impact of, of what we're buying, whether it's goods or services, are on each one of those stakeholders. View that, understand that, and then look for how we can maximise the benefit of the impact of that procurement on all of those stakeholders. So yeah, that's kind of uh, the TIOO, I guess, is where I would uh, where I'd settle on social value. Brilliant, thank you. So, um, how can organisations um, make sure that they include social value in their contracts and, and specifications? Then, I'll go back to you, Rob. Yeah, thanks, Emma. So, I I think for me, it is about understanding. Um, that impact and understanding how we can engage who the stakeholders are within the procurement. So, you know, if, if I take a, a typical example of what we do in schools, um, you know, it's, it's very easy to think of, well, you know, who are the individuals, who are the stakeholders involved in a catering contract? Well, that that's not just, you know, well, the schools, the, the actual children in the school in terms of, you know, do they get fed? It's what do they get fed? When do they get fed? How often do they get fed? What's the quality of what they're getting fed? You know, has what they've been fed um, been purchased in a way which is sustainable? Is it um, supporting the environment rather than detracting from the environment? Who is providing them with that food? Who's supplying them with that food in terms of the staff within the within the school? How are they being um, looked after? And how is their how is the impact on them being maximised in terms of whether they're paying? living wage, the conditions in which they're working, uh, etc. So it's, I think it's understanding and identifying early on, you know, when we talk about the, the procurement cycle, it's understanding within that right at the point of identifying the need, then looking, okay, well, this is the need, who are the stakeholders are involved in that? And how do we build them into that process to understand how we can maximise that benefit and, and that social value within that contract? Brilliant. Thank you. And Ben, I know obviously you're working very hard and, and including social contract uh, in specifications for schools at the moment. Um, have you got anything to add to that on how um, schools can add it into their contracts and, and other organisations? Yes. So uh, to build upon what Rob said, I suppose there's three stages to, I suppose, how you build in social value. So as Rob's just discussed, it's identifying early on, is there an opportunity for social value? What might that look like? Um, and who do you engage with? Then I think probably the second stage is when you're actually doing your tender and when you're asking for quotes, or maybe your contract's up for renewal and you're just having discussions with your supplier. So you've identified now, we want to consider social value to form part of the new contract. And I'd say there's probably two ways that you can ask for it to be in the contract. Um, one of them is within your specification or statement of requirements, however you want to call it. So where you're setting out, these are the goods and or services we need. You know, it needs to be delivered by this date. It needs to conform to this sort of quality. And you can also say, and we would like social value to be part of the contract here. And you might leave it at that, or you might say, and that social value, we want these sort of outcomes. Um, where you direct them to the type of social value you'd like to see. What I would say there is don't be too prescriptive. Don't tell them the actual social value you want them to do, but instead the outcome is the social value. Um, you will find that suppliers come up with weird and different ways 
to answer the outcome you want. So you don't want to restrict it by telling them how to do it. Um, so actually a good example I've seen recently in catering contracts for schools. Um, one supplier offered a smoothie bike, which is a bike that the children pedal to power the blender to make the smoothie that they then have. Now, I wouldn't say in your specifications, say one of the social values you want is a smoothie bike. I think you're restricting yourself there. Instead, what with the outcome? So you could say the social value we want is to encourage children to exercise and to encourage the consumption of fruit and veg. So one supplier might offer you a smoothie bike. The other may say, well, we'll support your sports day and give the children fruit and veg throughout the day. Um, so focus on the end result, not how they get there. The other way that I would suggest that you could put it into your tenders or in your contracts, if you have discussions, is to ask the supplier. So if you're doing a formal tender process, it might be in your questions. You might say social value is worth X percent of the weight into us when we come to award this contract. What can you offer? Or it might be more informal discussions, such as we are renewing our contract with you, but we're now conscious of social value. What sort of things can you offer? The advantage there is one, suppliers will probably usually give you stuff they're already doing or thinking about doing, which means um, they're not going to necessarily add to the cost of your contract because that is really along the lines of what they want to do. But also, um, secondly, in the example I just gave, they might give you a suggestion that you didn't even know was possible or perhaps you didn't think tick the social value box. Um, so it just makes it a bit easier there. And then the only final step, so we've got engaging, we've got putting it into your tenders. The final step, I'd say, is just monitoring it. It's all well asking for social value, um, but unless it's actually being carried out, have you actually embedded social value or have you just discussed it? So it's just double checking that your suppliers or whoever are actually doing what they've said they've done um, to just double check that the social value is being carried out. That's brilliant. Thank you. That's excellent advice. And obviously you touched on outcomes there. So uh, in schools and other organisations, uh, um, who actually benefits from adding social value? Rob? Yeah, I, th I think social value should be a virtuous circle. So it actually, every, everybody should benefit from, from adding social value um, into a contract. And I think if you've identified the right individuals um, within the process who are who is impacted by uh, the contract or the purchase, then actually ev everybody should, you know, uh, um, historically, when uh, I used to buy for uh, emergency responses um, back about God, 10 years ago or so, um, when we used to look at going in and inspecting factories and looking at factories of producing rope and producing blankets and, and plastic sheeting, etc., you know, it's not just a case of, well, you know, have you got good conditions in this factory that tick a box? Um, actually, social value, even even back then we were talking about, and I was talking about, um, you know, actually what's the impact on the community? So working with suppliers who provided healthcare, for example, for their um, for their not just their workers, but also their workers' families, um, providing protection. So if somebody got injured, um, I, either in work or outside of work, was there some kind of um, maybe like a health insurance or some kind of service provision for looking after and supporting those staff and their staff and their, their families, um, which in a lot of developing countries that, are, that those factories are based in, um, was critical because their access to healthcare was was you know often very very difficult very limited, so I think social value is is something that definitely you know the recipients of of the the goods or the products should be able to say actually this is something that we're doing it's something as an organisation whether you're a public sector organisation or a private sector organisation as Ben said it used to be called you know CSR um, now it's kind of changed the name to social value to a certain extent but. I think organisations should be able to promote and say, this is what we do, you know. So actually, uh, as part of what we're doing as a business, we're in the process of becoming a B Corp. and We're, we're kind of working through that process that um, that as a, as a standard um, says that we are about, um, we have a purpose which is more important than profit. Um, and I think social value enables organisations, certainly commercial organisations and, and corporate organisations to be able to say, actually, it isn't all about shareholder profit. There is more to, to business than that. Um, and then 
likewise, I think for, you know, if you're in a charity or you're in the public sector, it's, it's crucial that you demonstrate social value because your purpose is you have a, you're there to serve the public purpose in, in some shape or form. Um, so again, I think organizations definitely can, can benefit from it. Um, but it can't just be about ticking a box and we're doing this because it benefits us as an organization. People see through that really, really quickly. Um, and consumers see that really through that really, really quickly with private sector organizations and public ex- sector organizations now because of, of, of the laws. And you look at um, what we're doing in Wales uh, with the Future Generations Act and uh, Wellbeing Act, you know, actually it is now being legislated. You have to build social value in. Um, so the organizations can benefit, but I also think um, individuals and, and identifying those individual stakeholders right throughout that procurement process um, and into the delivery stage um, and also beyond that for some products in terms of how, how you actually dispose of products or, dis- or end contracts, etc. I think it's really, really important that you um, look to add value in each one of those stages and to all of the individuals. So everybody and society at large should benefit from social value done well within procurement. Brilliant. Thanks, Rob. Um, so, Ben, are there actually any costs of adding social value into the specifications? In theory, if you do it right, no. Um, if you look at any publications around social value, particularly coming from the government, um, in their sort of opening paragraphs when they're justifying social value, um, it's usually along the lines of for every pound spent, we want to see if there's a wider audience who can benefit from this. So the wording isn't for every pound spent, we want you to spend an extra pound on social value. It's instead, can social value be part of that that pound spent? Um, And I suppose that ties in earlier, I suggested one of the ways you can embed social value is asking the suppliers what they will do rather than specifying what you want them to do. And part of that reason is because they're already doing it or you know they've got plans for it and if they're responding as part of a tender they're probably assuming that's part of their costs and um, so by default i'd say no social value won't increase costs there are going to be circumstances where there might be a cost to social value and it might be part of your plan so local councils quite often they're very big on scoring high on social value and um, you know they'll make it a big part of the contract and they understand there may be a cost associated with that so for example they might be pushing for jobs to be created as part of their contract and that's fine because they've scoped it in that is their intention um but i think day to day you know you should be including social value as much as you can and because you should only be asking for social value that is relevant or proportionate to your contract often there's not going to be a cost and um, Earlier, I mentioned one of the pillars to what what counts as social value is environmental. These days, everyone's recycling or reducing their carbon footprint anyway by default, but that happens to tick a social value box. So you might already be doing it at a free cost, you know, not to your customers, but it also happens to be classed as a social value that you can then, you know, state was part of that contract. Brilliant. Thank you. Rob, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I think the challenge with with social value and and from a cost perspective is is what perspective you take in terms of short term and long term, and also your organisation as an as an individual entity versus society as a whole. Um, and I think that's where you know, there are occasions where, from a pounds perspective, uh, as, as Ben just said there, particularly things like with local authorities where they're trying to build that in. You know, if I look at um, some of the stuff that's coming out from the Welsh government at the moment and um, around how do we build and how do we invest in the, in the foundational economy and how do you support the growth of the foundational economy um, that then supports social and well-being um, within uh, local communities. There can be a, a short-term, you know, in individual organisation, there can be a cost to that, but, but the wider benefit ultimately will always add value, it will always be a cost benefit rather than um, an, a positive cost rather than a negative one. So um, I think, and I think local authorities are picking up on this more around, uh, and public sector broadly is picking up on the fact that actually if I spend a pound here on social value, it may not, it may cost me a pound in this department, in this budget, but actually it might save me five pounds or 10 pounds 
over here in this other budget. And I think that's where that holistic approach, particularly in the public sector, is really coming to the fore now in terms of social value and how do we look at social value in that wider context rather than just in the um, the bean counter, you know, today that's going to cost me a pound, yeah. um, but actually going forward either in other departments or going forward into the future, it's going to save us a lot more money. So, yeah, I think there is definitely a, a benefit to it that is a positive uh, from a cost perspective. Yeah, and as you said, you know, it is... Sorry. I say, I was going to say, Rob, if we could give an example then to what you said holistically, would a good example be, let's say, a local council awards a contract and they identify employment opportunities and they say, we would like you to target a disadvantaged area for these employment opportunities. And then it sounds like what you're saying is if you do employ people from this area, perhaps they're no longer on welfare benefits. Perhaps with greater income, they can afford to feed themselves more often. And maybe down the line, they have less health issues. There's less of a knock on effect in that area. Is that the sort of point you're making? It is, yeah. So I think, you know, when you when you do something like that, when you encourage employment within a local community, particularly where it's a, a maybe a ident- community that's been identified as, as, as deprived in, in terms of um, struggling economically, it, absolutely, you've got increase of, of, of jobs, you've got therefore increase of um, disposable income, you've got people being trained and, and developing skills that maybe they didn't have before. Then you think about the wider context of if you've got people now that are now earning and potentially earning decent, you know, good money and able to increase that, then you've got impacts in terms of free school meals. So do you have as many children you know, having to supplement free school meals? So the, the why, as you start to kind of the ripple effect, I think, of social value often goes far beyond the kind of the immediate. And I think that's one of the things that's important to capture with social value sometimes going to be a little bit tenuous and can be and people are going to be a little bit afraid of saying well you know it's you know for every pound i spent there's there's 10 pound of benefit to 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 the wider community um but actually it probably is in that kind of context in in a lot of ways because of that ripple effect that it has through through the economy particularly when you're investing in the foundational economy um as which is a big part of, of the welsh government's strategy at the moment yeah, definitely. And because of this importance and all the, the good it's doing, do you think it will become compulsory in the future for um, to include it within the tenders? I think to a certain degree, yes. Um, it already is in some contexts, mainly central government or uh, contracts that are of a high value, uh, where they're saying that you must include social value and in some circumstances, it must be, it's usually at least 10% weighting. Um, social values picked up a lot of traction over the last few years. So I think we're heading in that direction. And there is a new um, proposed law around procurement probably coming into effect in 2023. Earlier this year, the government did publish a green paper consultation document on what that new law is probably going to look like. Um, It was about 70 pages long, and there was definitely a theme of social value and just the way it was worded as a whole and the wider kind of community benefits that was featuring throughout the text, which we've not seen previously. So I wouldn't be surprised if in a couple of years, once social value is accepted more, that perhaps it is mandatory, that it must form part of every tender. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think with uh, if you look at you got public sector, there is definitely a shift towards that. As, uh, as Ben said, I think in the private sector, ultimately they're led by consu- generally they're led by what the consumer wants. And you've only got to look at you know, things like COP twenty six that are going on at the moment. Um, you know, I think they are they are kind of key milestones in society's kind of desire to change the way that we buy and and look at the impact of the things that we buy um so i think you know environmental aspects of of kind of social value are are definitely going to be on the increase and looking at that i think ben mentioned right at the start of this podcast around sustainability um sustainable procurement as kind of a the other way of looking at social value that is definitely on the rise and i and i think that's being led partly by businesses business owners wanting to be more um responsible in the way that they run their organizations and partly by consumers saying we expect you um, as providers of goods and services to be more responsible in the way that you deliver our our goods and services so it's both are pushing the same thing that you know in in the right direction Um, 
where I think we'll we'll be interested in is in I know, you know personal choice. Um, you know, I'm I'm not a vegan, um, but we are trying to do things around kind of meat free days and that kind of stuff. You know, I'll be be interested to see you know, if we take the school catering example, for example, whether we start to see things like meat free days, et cetera, or you know, actually some of those kind of aspects coming into um, social value within catering. So actually, as things that are acknowledged as being you know not good for the environment, um, how do we how do we tackle some of those bigger issues? Um, within some of the, you know, the contracts that we've got, and that's a, that's a fantastic challenge for us within two by two, um, because we want to make sure that we are um, we are having a positive impact on society. Um, so social value is, has got to be part of what we're doing, and how do we then provide that advice and support um, and awareness to others as well? So yeah, to, definitely there are um, there are challenges to it, but I think in in general the the, the direction is a really positive one on social value at the moment. Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. Thank you. And um, Ben, you mentioned earlier that um, obviously when um, uh, selecting social value as part of a tender, it needs to be relevant and proportionate. So are there any sort of risks then uh, involved? Um, and if so, do the benefits outweigh the risks? I would say when you're thinking about social value, there's probably three risks associated it number one is that it's not taken seriously you're just paying lip service so i mentioned earlier if you're embedded in your contracts make sure you monitor it to make sure it happens otherwise i think you know certainly while social value is still a, a relatively new concept to some people they might be asking it but not really taking it seriously so that's one risk um the second risk would be as you've just mentioned, Emma, what if it's not proportionate or relevant to your contract? So you're giving social value too much emphasis. Um, and really the two risks there is one, you are sending the supplier in such a direction for social value, you've sort of forgotten actually what the contract's for. And perhaps they've misunderstood it, perhaps there's an extra cost. Or the extreme example is you've been so specific in your social value that some suppliers are unable to fulfill that. And actually you've inadvertently precluded them from your tender, and there might be uh, procurement law repercussions there. And I'd say the third risk is for suppliers. And now we are shifting to the, was this mindset of social value, or even, you know, if it's environmental targets, which in your head, you're not calling social value, but it ticks that social value box. Is there a reputation risk if you're resistant to these? And um, are you going to struggle to win tenders or contracts in the future if you can't be shown that you are moving with the direction that you know, the whole economy and society is heading. Um, and to answer the second part of your question, then, do the benefits outweigh the risks? Yes. Um, so me and Rob discussed earlier, you know, holistically, you might be um, asking for social value up front, but what impact that has on society in a way perhaps you can't even measure, it benefits everyone as a whole. It has a positive outcome and a benefit. And I don't think any of the risks I discussed are uh, serious enough. And I think they can be mitigated if you just think about and do social value correctly. And um, so really, there shouldn't be any adverse risk to social value, provided you've given it enough thought and time. Brilliant. Thank you. Rob, have you got anything else to add to that? Uh, I think no. I think I think those are the three. Those are definitely the three key risks. Um, but yeah, I would just echo um, Ben's view really and Ben's thoughts in terms of uh, in terms of the benefit. Uh, I think we we have to we have to take social value seriously. Um, and I think as organisations, there's sometimes a risk that we uh, we downplay or we get worried about engaging in it. Um, is it the right thing to do? Can we afford it? Can we? And, and I think as Ben's outlined earlier, you know, actually it doesn't have to cost a huge amount. It can just be about uh, encouraging suppliers to be inventive um, in terms of what they can do in terms of providing solutions um, so that they give you the right solution you want and in a way which creates social value. Um, and I think the other thing is that, uh, you know, that point that Ben made around there is social value. Lots of people are doing things which are having a wider social impact that are bringing social value They're maybe just not picking it up yet and recording it and and I think again there's an opportunity for organizations to be able to shout out and say actually we, we didn't realize we were doing this but turns out we are uh, and that I think is something that uh, I encourage lots of organizations to to look at as well. 
Brilliant. Thank you both. That was a very interesting insight into social value. It's clearly a very important topic and something procurement professionals should be thinking about when running tenders. So hopefully that's a lot of food for thought today. If you want to find out more about our fantastic speakers, they're both on LinkedIn. And I'm sure they'd be more than happy to connect with you. So go and look them up now. Um, we hope you enjoyed the podcast and found it useful. Don't miss our next episode on procurement zero or hero, the qualities of a great pro procurement professional. That's easy enough for me to say. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe and never miss an episode. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye.